Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India So today we are going to look at uh, individual level OD interventions. Before we talk about the interventions, let us look at sub, su certain situations and think what a normal person would will do in this situation. There is one Jerry Sternin who is a committed uh, social worker, he is funded by a reputed agency. Uh, he, his agency sent him to relatively small, war torn and poor country to deal with the problem of child mal malnutrition. And the problem is so serious that more than 65 percent children are malnourished. Uh, how do I, so how do I go about handling this situation? A country like India had to eradicate the literacy. Now most of the welfare schemes are mobilized and managed through collector's office, uh, district collector office and how can it how can it use the district administration structure to achieve the 100 percent literacy rates? So, collector office is a nodal agency which routes maybe dozens of uh, welfare schemes and developmental schemes. Literacy is one of them, they have to deal with malnutrition, security, employment generation, uh, constructing houses taking care of the health, so many things. Now, if we have to make a collector office working towards achieving the 100 percent literacy with more vigor, what can be the way? Waterborne diseases are the major issues in a country like India. Fecal oral infections are the causes of these diseases. How this situation can be handled? How to motivate people to keep their surroundings clean? How to eradicate the disease like polio in country like India? And it's a specific situation because polio means you can arrest it, you can control it just by giving few drops for uh, two, three years, uh, once in a year. It's it, that is straightforward a solution. But still, it took many, many years to control that disease. Solution is providing at the doorstep. People are aware of it. But many a time in the primary health care centers it is not there, sometimes people want to get time, sometimes they forget, sometimes they give it once a year, but then they forget next year and next year. So, uh, uh, in India what, what was done, uh, they ensure the, the, the program was introduced where for till the age of 5 every year there were some campaigns. And uh, for all the kids below the age of 5, they were given those drops. So, this is like a simple movement to arrest that disease. Uh, and the, the volunteers were there and the uh, work, social workers were there and the health workers were there in the railway stations and in, in, uh, in the market, they went to schools and they were working in villages, all that. So, in a specific time period, everybody was given that. So, you see that how behavior is changed is it, it, it follows a pattern. So, there are certain insights about how behavior can be changed and that and so most of these things are about changing the individual behavior. So, that is what we are going to look at and many of these questions will so, these questions we will revisit looking at this framework. Uh, they are not the researchers for all the findings, but they have Chip and Dan he they have compiled so many findings about change in the human behavior. Brain has two parts, we all know about it. There is emotional part and there is a rational part. So, emotional part is the instinctive that feels pain and pleasure and the rational part. What rational part is? that makes logic, that understand research papers, that is where we want to attack for uh, in the awareness building, it reflects, it is deliberative, it is analytical. 
so these two parts are always active um, which part do you think is stronger in terms of adapting any change rational part it is difficult to convince with the rationality so rationally we all know that we should wake up at 5:30 go for a walk or do exercise but that there is emotion which prevent us to take one more nap and we think that okay, the emotion says that if why it is necessary to start jogging from today we'll do it next day isn't it so there is no dearth of knowledge in this world the problem is how people are not that uh, willing to change their way. so the rational side may want to wake up at 5:45 allowing plenty of time for quick jog but the emotional part will say may enjoy us losing in a warm cocoon of sheets and blanket and want a few more minutes of sleep same thing is with chocolate or samosas or vadas so we uh, our rational part says that it is not good for us but the emotional part says that okay let's enjoy now and then from tomorrow onwards we'll take care of this calorie business so if we compare elephant and rider with this emotional and the rational part in the elephant and rider which is emotional or which is rational if we if these two parts uh, rational and emotional these are the brains which part is comparable to what so rider is basically a rational part which give which directs so elephant is the emotional part and rider is the rational why do you think most of the changes fail because rider says something and elephant is not willing to follow why emotional don't follow because elephant is not motivated about it so everyone in our workforce ha- is both a rider and elephant riders direct elephant has to be motivated the problem is most of the changes fail because elephant is not sufficiently motivated elephant is much stronger than rider but is lazy and prefers immediate gratification over delayed gratification so the rider may want to avoid candy today to be slimmer tomorrow but elephant wants the candy today and that is the story about any individual level change initiative we know so many things we should do or we should not do but still we engage we still being indulge because there is emotional part in us not willing to follow the instructions of the rider even if the rider instructions are supported by research backed by data coming out of the ideals of the human life etc etc emotion is elephant so at the end what happens if i keep breaking my promise if elephant keeps overpowering me then after a while i stop even making effort to motivate elephant so many of you will stop making new year resolution <clears throat> by the time you reach to my age because many of us will be exhausted with those resolutions and resolutions just don't fulfill because our emotional part which is elephant is not sufficiently motivated to pursue that uh, that is all so better we stop making the resolution so what can we do about it what is to be done and what can be done is the essence of this book called switch and they have given a very simple but very impactful model what is required just look at the first line what is required is we direct the rider rider must be directed towards what is needed motivate the elephant and shape the path so sudden change initiatives require giving the proper direction some changes require more about motivating the emotions emotional part and uh, some changes are possible when we make small inter- uh, interventions to make things easier to follow the change process or to implement the change we'll look at it through certain examples 
uh, riding the directing the rider there are three ways of directing the ride finding the bright spot script the critical move and point to destination now find the right bright spot this is this is the first example of jerry sternin what jerry sternin did he was not from a very very rich uh, development agency when he reached to vietnam he and his team and the team was not very strong or big was did not receive a great welcome and the minister in the country said that you have 6 months to show any change and what he did he and his small team did a survey about the nutritional conditions of uh, kids in sample villages they would go to the families request the family members to weigh their kids and to make the uh, their profile after doing survey village after village and whichever villages they chose they ensured that they cover as many kids as possible the first insight was that people kids children and their malnutrition was not at all connected and very very poorly connected to the education level of the parents or even the socio economic class of the parents there was something else other than the education and the socio economic class which was causing which was related to malnutrition what was found is that uh, they looked at their food habits and whose food habit they did not look at the overall sample they identified the kids who are not malnourished and from a uh, social higher and lower social economic class so they looked at the bright spots and they found that kids even if they are coming from if they are from a lower social economic uh, background the family of lower social economic class their mothers were adding shrimps while cooking for the cooking the rice that was a one simple practice they noticed so mothers were adding shrimps while cooking the rice and that gave them the nutrition that's where they reached to the conclusion so this was an example of how finding a bright spot led them to identify the important factor about change and then they popularized this practice of uh, adding shrimps uh, while cooking the rice same practice uh, similar thing similar logic is applied by one ngo which received the prize in the year we our team also received the prize uh, they made a iron fish it's called magic fish it releases iron in small quantity while putting it in the vessel where on which you cook your rice so this is uh, popular in nepal and uh, some other third world countries while cooking the rice you add that iron fish in india they have found that drumstick has a very strong nutritional value and availability of drumstick is not related to the economic class if you keep if you add the drumsticks in the food regularly it can supply a lot of nutritious things and a lot of nutritious element to to the kids so this is one example of finding bright spot and from there we move about change <coughs> second example of second way of directing the rider is script the critical move what is specifically required you do that so uh water bond diseases the critical move was to construct the toilet that that what's done there there's one research studies there's one research study about the cancer patients and the adolescent and teenager cancer cancer patients the disease could be cured 
but if they don't follow the medical regime, if they don't take the medicine, the, the chances of relapse uh, becomes very high. So, to avoid the relapse, they have to take the medicine. Now, when I am not feeling any weakness, when I am disease free, generally I am not motivated to uh, take the medicine and uh, uh, patients also forget taking medicine because their body is not giving any specific signal that they are feeling weak or if there are any pains. So, uh, they forget, they do not seriously follow the medication. Some video games were designed by the team of medical professionals and the IT professionals. In the video game, certain moves were allocated certain points and these, those moves were related to you know, not forgetting taking the medicine. Teenagers and adolescents who uh, scored well, to score well, you need to remember at what time you have to take medicine. And this was a strong signal conveyed in a uh, very interactive environment with some challenge. They were found, it was found that kids who played those video games, their tendency to forget reduced very significantly and a large number of, a larger percentage amongst them were following the medication required after they were declared disease. Third way of directing the rider is point of destination. Teach for America. This campaign was very, very powerful and very popular. You attach some activity with the larger uh, destination. In India, it happened about literacy and that is where we, we come to our example of literacy. A collector office which manages so many welfare schemes and the public distribution schemes, how to make them motivated to uh, work more diligently and more sincerely on the literacy. In uh, mid of 80s, one district in Kerala, Ernakulam, was uh, declared 100 percent literate. When this 100 percent literacy was declared for that district, many, many collectors became motivated to make their district also 100 percent different. So, it became a very clear destination that my district is 100 percent literate and this office, the collector and collector office, they were the instrumental in bringing that district from x percentage of literacy to the 100 percent literacy. So, when the destination is clear, uh, that gives the direction to the right. Then comes the motivation part, the how to motivate the elephant. Generally, these are not about a uh, lot of facts. It is about how to make people see what is needed to be done. So, this is one story about in G, G being a huge corporation, they have so many manufacturing units. One uh, purchase manager looked at how many types of globes are being supplied to different GE companies and how many suppliers and how many designs. He found that there are 200 designs of the globes being supplied by dozens of suppliers. Naturally, this makes the system more complex and difficult to manage and uh, the bargaining power of the G also reduces because of so many suppliers. He wrote about it, he made people aware of it, managers would express their concern, but still uh, no specific action or policy decision was made. During one of the meetings where the top management uh, from the manufacturing and the supply uh, purchase and the finance uh, department was supposed to meet. He collected a dozen or two dozen globes, which were not very different, uh, but they were being supplied by different suppliers and different companies 
were uh, ordering them with those specification he put that stack in the near the entrance of this meeting seeing that stack of the two dozen globes people became curious what is what what is communicating and the message was conveyed to them that these globes are looking very similar but they are being supplied by so many different uh, suppliers and that is not good to enhance the bargaining power and get the best deal in the same meeting a decision was made that we will reduce the number of suppliers and we will optimize the number of the globe the designs of the globes people were aware of it but it has to be conveyed to them is with more tangible evidences more tangible messages to bring about any change shrink the change when you make change look like not very distant people were feel motivated about it in an experiment uh, in the car wash company in a by a garage they gave the coupons uh, to their customers wherein uh, in one group they gave 10 coupons stating that these are the 10 coupons we are giving once you finish these 10 coupons by taking 10 by taking uh, the car wash you will get the next car wash free but since this is a campaign going on we are tearing the two uh, two coupons now you have to give take only eight car washes to get the free car wash so they gave 10 tear the two and make made people think that okay they have already achieved the they have already completed the two car washes and now uh, they have to only get uh, take the eight car washes from the same garage with another group they gave eight coupons with a request that once you finish these eight coupons you will get the uh, free car wash what was found that 17% customers who were given eight coupons came back they completed the eight car wash and came for the free car wash but 34% uh, customers who got the 10 but they were made feel that uh, they have to get only eight and the two is like a small discount for them the their follow up rate was much more almost double comparing to the first group so when people think that uh, the change is manageable and we have come to some distance and now small effort relatively lesser effort can make the change possible people feel motivated grow the people to a bigger reality uh, teach for india or if you look at the cleanliness movement or if you look at the taking care of the uh, tourist and communicating that how i how we behave with tourist are in a way reflection on my country how people behave in the foreign countries when you are representing your country these are the examples where you see people behave very differently when they are grown to the bigger reality so there is a story of the three workers uh, they were asked what are they were employed on a site of a construction of a temple or a westminster church you can take any example one uh, worker being asked how what are you doing he said i am just uh, paying uh, back for what i did not do in the childhood had i uh, worked better and could have got more education i would wouldn't be doing what i am doing so i am just uh repenting second worker said that okay i am doing because i have to take care of my family and first worker said that i am contributing to make this westminster church see the three things uh all three are correct but the third stance make people motivated to contribute more wholeheartedly so if we make people to see what they are doing is something very important and contributing to the larger reality they are doing it shape the path sometime small procedural changes or administrative changes or structural changes can help to change the behavior 
tweak the environment to deal with this uh, problem of obesity in uh, in many societies it is realized that we have to motivate people to eat less now how to eat less if you have so huge uh, servings uh, in the restaurants and most of the people uh, rely on restaurant food how to make people convince about eating less there is one experiment conducted the popcorn was given to the same size of uh, in the same size of bucket from the uh, from the outside but with the one group uh, uh, the bucket was filled uh, and the, some uh, space was covered with the paper and over that popcorn was filled both the groups feel felt equally satisfied so when the when they were surveyed about their hunger and their satisfaction there was no difference in their satisfaction level so a small change in the environment here it is a popcorn bucket made people change their behavior building habits uh, one example is of the checklists checklist if you make the checklist uh, and every time you ensure that you you uh, you tick mark the checklist it ensures that people follow that path and rally the hero generally people feel more uncomfortable on path of change when they have to walk alone so whenever a new change is initiated if there is a group of people who are going through the process people feel more comfortable so if you remember the very second stage of the john porter's uh, models of steps of change talks about building a guiding coalition when we convince few people for change and when they work in the, they work in the group that strengthens their uh, emotions and uh, motivation to work uh, towards uh, achieving that desired change so rally the hero and having the group of people to go through the change process make them much more comfortable in the change process so if you introduce a uh, say performance new performance appraisal system if you if you do it to the larger number of people larger number of groups people will feel more comfortable. like likewise uh, there has to be a group which is subjected to change and that makes people come